Hi guys, Marjorie's sister for real. I got the tea kills babies. And I got this mic. Guys, I got an update from you for you guys all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. And I know you may have heard it already, but you know Monday at 1.30, the judge um presiding over the Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis case went behind closed doors and um, they wanted to determine whether the text messages that Terrence Bradley had. Terrence Bradley, you guys, is the former attorney that did the divorce case for Mr. Nathan Wade. So they were trying to determine whether the information he had, since he's the stall witness, they say, the information that he have, whether it is client privileged or not. And Georgia Code 24-5-501 rules that confidentiality between an attorney and a client are privileged under what circumstances may an attorney break an attorney um, client privilege was the question. They wanted to see whether they could allow Mr. Bradley to testify against Nathan Wade. They're just trying to clarify the time period. They're trying to determine whether Fannie Willis actually had a relationship with Nathan Wade prior to his hiring. <laughs> wow, I'm telling you, this case is something else. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. And you know, Nathan actually tried to stop it from happening, but he didn't succeed from stopping um, the judge from looking at that information that Terrence Bradley had to make a decision. So that's what happened Monday at 1.30. So based on the information that I have, that information will be allowed in court. And Bradley was really having, Terrence Bradley was really having a hard time on the stand. Look, he was sweating. Ooh, big, big, whew, big preparation, uh, perspiration. He just seemed like he had a hard time. So I don't know whether he was struggling, the fact that he had the right information, or whether he was fabricating. I'm not for sure because you know, Terrence Bradley was the one that was in partnership initially with Nathan Wade. So I'm thinking, and then he hired him to be his attorney, but in in that time, in between time, it was alleged that Terrence Bradley raped one of the employees that worked for the firm, for the partnership firm. So Wade had to actually fire him. So I'm thinking now, okay, if he fire him, is he not speaking because he's lying? And trying to have a, uh, a getting back at him for firing him, or does he really have the information and scared that he's going to be disbarred if he disclosed it? Because he had said initially that he had um, consulted, he had consulted uh, with the um, the state board, licensing board, to determine whether he could actually speak on the matter. And they had actually remember he said that told him to not. Not to say anything, but on the stand, he was giving some bits and pieces of the information because he was saying that um, the um, board, the regulate attorney told him not to say anything. Whatever he thought was um, client privilege information, he needed, did not say anything and pretty much um, plead the fifth. But I didn't hear him pleading the fifth. I just kept hearing him saying that this is, um, that was client privilege information. So, I'm wondering, um, and they said also through my research, it says that that confidentiality between the attorney and the client can be um, a moot issue if, if it's a, a crime, a fraud. And normally that's the case with all um, agency. The state, that's their um, take on it, their position on it, and the Internal Revenue Service where I was an agent, um, basically that was their take. Like for taxes, for, for reasons of, to just, just to draw a point here, 
you have six years that the Internal Revenue Service can really um, look back at your returns. So it's best to keep your returns for six years. But if you have <laughs> some fraudulent situation that you know about and they don't know about, keep your return forever because they can go back anytime and do an audit on you if they feel it's fraud, fraud or crime. So please keep that in mind. So in this case, um, I don't know exactly what's going to um, come out of that, um, out of the um, information he have, being the star witness. Um, Y'all tell me, um, do you think that the judge should have made that decision to look at the information that he had to make that decision? Since um, Terrence Bradley was saying it was confidential, and I don't think that this is considered a crime of fraud where this would have been an exception to the rule. So tell me what y'all think. Do you think that the judge should have um, pulled Bradley, um, Mr. Bradley, Terrence Bradley behind closed doors and look through his information and make that decision? Do you think he should have done that? Or do you think um, he should just he should have just said, uh, continue to say um, privilege information or um, say um, plead the fifth. Now, I'm saying a mouthful, but I really want to know what your take is on that. I want to know your position. Because the state bar was telling him not to say anything, that he could be um, disbarred. And the other question is here, do you think he's going to be disbarred? based on um, what the judge told him to do. And that was to let him look at that information and make a decision. So guys, um, the I just wanted to bring y'all up to date on that. I'll try to keep you posted, but please, if you could put comments um, in, in my comments, what you think. Um, guys, once again, I appreciate you watching. It means so much to me. I love you guys, and there's nothing you guys can do about it. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. Nothing you can do about it, baby. So let me know. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. If not in the next video, maybe on March 7th when there's the next hearing I heard. So guys, I love you once again. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.